Hello, everyone. Welcome. I'm Lindsay, a member of the CK12 team, and my colleague Katie and I will be running today's webinar, Advanced Flexbook Editing. We're so glad that you guys have all joined us. Before I introduce you to CK12, I'd like to do a quick reminder about Zoom. Right now, you guys should be seeing two different windows in your Zoom screen, one for Q&A and one for chat. During today's presentation, whenever you have questions for the presenter, please put them in the Q&A window. We're gonna stop after each major section and answer any questions that you've posted in Q&A. The chat window is more of a place for community conversation. We'd love for you guys to introduce yourselves. If you're an educator, feel free to share where you live and the subject you teach. Um, we just need you to make sure in the window that you have changed the default option to say all panelists and attendees. If you don't select that drop down menu, it's just gonna send it to panelists and um, that won't help create our community. So please change that to all panelists and attendees to let everybody um, see your message. While we don't anticipate any technical issues during our broadcast, if you're having any trouble with your video or sound, please let us know in either of these windows. So with that, let me introduce you to Katie. Thanks, Lindsay, and thank you to everyone who joined us for today's session on advanced Flexbook editing. In our Flexbook 101 sessions, we covered the basics, including finding content on CK12, simple edits, and sharing your content with students and others. If you missed that session, I highly encourage you to watch the recording or join us for a future offering of that session. So in this webinar, along with a brief review of those basic edits, we'll be covering the following topics. Incorporating formatting and citing images, so our license, inline versus figure images, and adding attributions. Embedding videos and CK12 practice or quizzes, so finding and using those embed codes for multimedia. Then we'll talk about CK12's math editor and special character options, so that you, whether or not you know LaTeX coding, you can include nicely formatted math equations. And then finally, enhancing your flexbook and adding clarity. So including links to interactives, adding headers, subheaders, element boxes, what it looks like in print versus online, and our details and resources tab. So our main goal is that by the end of this session, you understand all of the options you have as you customize and enhance content on CK12. So before we get into the core content of today's webinar, it would be great if we found out a little bit more about you and your knowledge of our editing tools. So here in just a second, we're going to launch a poll. There it is. Um, that's gonna ask about customization that maybe you've done with CK12. So we are asking you, what experience do you have with using and customizing CK12 Flexbooks? And please select all that apply. I'll let you guys kind of work your way through this list of options. And again, select as many as you have experience with or um, don't select any if it's all brand new to you. Or I guess select the first one if it's brand new to you. We'll give you just a minute to answer. So it looks like we have about 75% of you have submitted answers to that. Um, we'll give you another just a little bit longer to kind of add in those last parts as you vote. Um, and then we will wrap it up from there. Okay, so as you guys can see, let me share those results with you. Um, so a lot of you, over 50% of you are brand new to CK12 Flexbooks. Um, so hopefully some of you guys were able to take the Flexbooks 101 session um, the, earlier this fall or even maybe this summer if you joined us then. Um, and then some of you had started to embed and make basic edits. So um, feel free to you know, ask those next level questions. This is the advanced um, session. So we're happy to take all those nitty gritty little questions as we work our way through. Um, if you are new, we can refresh anything as well, but we'll focus kind of on those higher level pieces as we go. Um, so I think with that, we're going to continue forward and we'll start with a refresher on basic flexbook editing. Um, so you'll see some of this again as I go through this webinar and we're happy to go through it in questions as I just said. 
um, but we'll keep that focus on some of the core topics for today. So if you want to just do the basics for Flexbook editing, so that customize button is your friend. For any book or read, if you want to start customizing that content, you can click customize and that will open up all of your editing options. If you're in a book itself, you can delete or reorder that content using our that little X for delete and the kind of what looks like a coordinate plane or two axes together, that up and down arrow or drag arrows will allow you to reorder content within a book. Um, and then you can add content. So either within the book by choosing the add content option, or if you're browsing, there's an add to Flexbook option that you can add content to your book, kind of making sure that you're either in edit mode or that you're browsing and you've already saved your edits. Um, and then you can see those updates the next time you go through. And then you can share content. So that little green share a plane is a way to share um, an option that will go to social media. It will go to Google Classroom. That's just sharing directly. You can also share to CK12 groups, access stuff in an integrated learning management system, or you can use the unique URL at the top of any of our pages and share that directly with other users. Um, as a note, we did just barely release our un enhanced integration with Google Classroom. So if you're sharing via the share plane, you're just sharing that content and posting it, but you also now have the option to assign directly. And that would be covered in some of our assignments and groups and practice um, webinars. So definitely check that out, um, even just as you explore. So those are some of the basics, but why don't we jump right in and start talking about images and Flexbooks. Thanks, Lindsay. Um, so I want to start when we're talking about images, when you click on the image icon, and I'll show this to you live as we go into this, but I want you to just kind of look at these two tabs right off the bat, because the first tab is what's going to pop up, that general image that allows you to choose a file and upload it into our system. Um, but then that second tab is super, super important. Um, and that allows you to pick your figure versus inline. So what type of image, and I'll show you the difference between those. Um, and then include all of this other information, um, your source, your credit, attribute it and cite it accordingly. Um, as you can see here, anything you're uploading will stay under our CCBYNC license. Um, and this is just a reminder that you are working under that license. So you wanna make sure that anything that you're including and adding to our system fits within that license, that you're not including copyrighted material that you wouldn't actually be able to include. Um, so that's kind of your basics on the image piece. And so actually let's go in and let's share, I'm gonna share my screen and we're gonna see what that looks like live within our system. So hopefully you can all see our homepage on CK12. Um, I'm logged in and if I went into any particular book, so let's say, I was gonna pick life science for today. And I could actually go into the textbook itself and I could pick a concept and I could customize it and I could work my way through there. Um, I could also search. So let's say I wanted to do one on learned behavior. And this would allow me to see all of these different choices and I could pull up just an individual read within that. So I'm gonna work within this particular one here today. And as we mentioned, this customize option is your friend. So that is what allows me to go in and actually edit this piece. And I'm just gonna tag it so I know that this is the one I'm working on for today. And then it will bring me into our CK12 editor. And so this is where at the top you can see kind of all those basic edits that you would expect, the bold italics underline, as well as a number of different options. So here you can see images that were already in place. So let's actually go down to one part way through this thing. And so this particular image, if I click on this image, it highlights the option if I wanted to open it up and edit it. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna edit an existing image. And you can see the file's already in there. And if I go to these image options, it has an, a significant amount of information in here. So the first is that this is a figure image. So that means within figure, I have three size options. I can do a teeny little thumbnail. I could do a full page for this, or I could choose kind of that medium ground, that postcard option. And with it, I also have a caption. So that would be for figure options. And then I can put in some alt information, but this is an alt tag. So it's kind of that information you get when you hover over your image. And then we definitely want your source and your credit as you go through here. So in this case, you have your Flickr link directly to this image. 
So all of that information that I have in here, I want to be able to include as I include new images within this content. Um, so let's say I change this from a figure to an inline image. So inline, instead of being a figure, it's not, it's not going to be kind of the, the main figure with that same caption piece. But this allows me to select a width. So I could pick, let's say, 400 pixels wide, and I could insert that image that way. And you see it lost kind of that figure component. Um, this caption text is now just regular text within that piece. Um, but I could pick that pixel width as I worked my way through. If I went back to here again, and I actually said, no, nope, I really want this to be an inline image, or sorry, a figure image, it then grays out the option to pick that, and I can pick my size. So in this case, let's make this a thumbnail, and you'll see that it shrinks down a bit. And now it's just this little image here. If I wanted this caption back in there, I could open it up again and put my caption in there. And you can see that piece. If you want to see the difference between them, let's actually upload a brand new image. So I'm going to just right below it, click my insert edit image option. I'm going to choose a file in this case from my desktop, and I'm going to pick the same image again and upload it again. So what I'd want to do is I'd want to put in the Flickr link in here, and then the two credits as we did, and I would put the full credit in there if I was actually putting this into the piece. Um, but I can add new cover text and any of these pieces as I insert this here. And I'm going to save this as a postcard. So here you now see kind of your small one, your second one here as larger, and then I could even go a size larger than that, and I could do a full page option. So let's insert it one more time just so you see what that looks like. And once again, every time I insert, I'm gonna pick which kind I want, the size I want, and then I definitely want to put the full, kind of not even just this little piece, but I could actually go back in. So let's see if I open to this one up here, just so we get good practices in, I'd copy the full source of this. And then I would go ahead and I would put that full source in here. And I would insert that in there so that you get the full caption. So there's lots of different options as I go through here. You can see other images down here that I could work with. Um, I can go through here. I'm gonna actually save this so you can see what this looks like. And so as we go through here, just a couple of notes. Our sizes are based on the width of a picture. So I picked one that was fairly horizontal. So if you look at this here, let's scroll down to where that saved, and you can see kind of your tiny little thumbnail, your standard postcard, and then the full page is actually the full width of the page. Um, and so one thing to be careful of for that, I'm gonna just switch over to a PDF that I did of this lower image below here earlier. And if I do that, and I scroll down into here, go all the way down to where that image is, you can see, this is kind of your standard image as you're working your way through, but if I made it a full page, because it's so vertical, it would take over more than that um, vertically. So just be aware that when we're talking about widths that you're talking about it based on, or sorry, image size that you're talking about it based on the width there. Um, so in that case, if we went here, you can see if I hover over any of this stuff, you might get some information as you're going through here, different text, you'd see different places. Um, kind of the caption that we put on here, which isn't in the other ones because I didn't include the full caption. Um, but you definitely want to kind of explore all of those options on that second tab to definitely include your licensing to make sure that you're having the full citation that you need for anything that you're including there, um, that you're choosing your image size and you're working from there. So let's see if we have any questions at this time, maybe, for uploading and including images. Well, Katie, right now our Q&A is pretty quiet. The chat is going. So thank you for all of you who are, um, who are telling us where you're from and what you're teaching. That's all great information. Um, but why don't we, we'll just give it a minute here. If you had any questions based on what Katie just shown you, we're just getting started. This was just images, but do type a question into Q&A and um, she's got her screen up and we'll do a demo here. So, or maybe Katie, you were so crystal clear on that that nobody has any questions at this time. Well, we can also just continue on. We have, you know, those four sections. So feel free to continue to put questions in Q&A as I move forward. Um, we're going to talk about embedding videos and other multimedia at this point in time. 
Um, so I'm going to pick another area from that life science book. And once again, we can do it from here. So let's say I went to the beginning and I navigated instead of through search this time, let me go right here, life science concepts. I could go into a particular book and I could actually go all the way down into a chapter or a section that I wanted to work on. And you can customize the entire book if you wanted to actually edit that book as a whole. But I could also go into any particular section that I wanted and I could then choose to update that particular section and simply customize this individual section instead of the entire book if I just wanted that read. So we're gonna do this, just save it so I know what I'm working on. And then we have a couple of different options. So I'm gonna start with embedding multimedia. And so at the very bottom of this is an explore more. So you have this link and notice here, if I click on this, I can right click and I can edit the embedded piece. It has an embed code, it has a preview of this particular image. If for some reason I accidentally deleted this piece and I wanted to put it back in here, you have a couple of options. So option A is that particular link, which is just your YouTube link. I could just, outside of kind of any option here, so if you're in here, see how it's grayed out? You can't put embedded um, media within a title or within a bulleted list. So just make sure you're outside of that. And then I can paste simply a URL code for a YouTube video and we'll actually auto embed that option. So that's probably your simplest option for embedding video. Um, for any of you that don't know how to get to this particular piece, um, if I went over to that video option, so this is the same video here that I just pulled up on YouTube, that same link right here. Um, if I just paste the link, it auto embedded. If instead I said, okay, let's maybe for some reason, you're having issues or you wanted to embed other pieces. I can actually click on this little kind of play strip, the film strip with the play option, and I can paste an embed code here. Now, if I went to that video on YouTube, you can pull your embed code under the share options for this. So right here I have share. And then if I go down just a bit, I can see the options to embed right here. And if I click embed, it gives me this embed code. And I can simply copy that. And then I can paste that embed code here and I can preview it and see what it's gonna look like. And so now I know I have the right video and I'm good to go there and I can insert that video. So I can always put that multimedia in either directly via the link or by pulling the embed code and putting it in. Um, and if you forget what it is, cause you're just seeing this piece, just right click on that element box there. Um, and you can go up here and preview it again and see what you're working with. Hey, can now, one, of, one, of our, um, one of our educators just chimed in, you know, can you show us once again, the easiest way to embed a video? So you just showed a couple of different ways, maybe just talk through one more time of um, the best way to um, just real quick, do a, a recap of that. Sure, so if it's a video, if that's what you're trying to embed, and I'm here on YouTube looking at this video, I can simply copy the URL, so I'm just, Control Z copying and then pasting it. So if I paste this and see if it actually took it, there we go. I can paste in that. And if I'm pasting a link to a YouTube video, our system will auto embed that video for you. So that's the simplest option for you. So right off the bat, that's your great, great choice. Now the embed options are especially useful. Let's say if you wanted to do other things other than YouTube. So here, and hopefully that answered that question. If that didn't, please let me know. But just simply copy and paste the YouTube link and it should auto embed. If I wanted to embed other options, other multimedia, so let's say I wanted to embed the practice that goes with this. So up here, if I went to that page right here, so the importance, I'm just gonna click over for a second. This particular section lives within a concept page. So if I wanted to look at the matching practice, which I could access via that orange link, or I could actually, if I go into the link itself to that little modality page, on the left here, under these create new questions, you'll see three dots. And these three dots will allow you to access the embed code for the practice. So if I click this embed option, just like I would on YouTube, 
it will give me the same type of code, an embed code there, which I can then copy. And here's your second option. So I'm outside of there, I click this insert edit media, and I paste in my embed code, and I can even preview it and make sure it's getting me what I have. Oh look, it's showing me the practice option for that particular piece. And then I can insert that practice in here. So for videos, simply just paste your URL and it will auto embed, but for any other type of media, you're gonna need to choose so for example, for this one, just choose that insert edit media strip up there and you'll be good to go in terms of adding that particular media. I'm gonna do one more option for media that you can embed here. Um, and then we will, I'll save this and you can see what it looks like kind of on the other side. So let's say we're talking about animals and we could maybe add something about, you know, what animals are you familiar with? And if you created a Google slide presentation, you also have the option to do that. So in this case, this is Google slide. Um, these are actually the dogs of CK12 um, a little while ago. These are the ones that kind of floated in and out of our office. Um, and I can share this, I can download this, but if I click this as published to the web, I'll actually, here is another option to get an embed code. So once again, I'm pulling up this nice little embed code, copying that, and then going back to the page that I was on, choosing insert edit media, and pasting in that embed code. If I wanna see what it looks like, I can preview it, and there we go, insert it there. So let's save this for a second. Um, as a reminder, if I keep this as a draft, only the owner of this particular source sees those updates. If I finalize it, then anyone with the URL, um, whether that it's published or just shared or whatever that looks like, can see those changes. Um, and finalize just means I'm finalizing it and sending it out so others can see it. Um, I always have the option to go back and continue to edit that component. So if we save this and it's gonna add this piece. Now you're going to see a couple of different options for embedded media. So option one, we added in this nice little Google slide presentation. I can advance through it. Option two, we just pasted the YouTube link in here and it embedded this YouTube video. And option three, we went to that practice option, pulled the embed code and embedded it in here. So that embed, that like multimedia embed option works wherever you can pull that embed code and put it in here. Um, I have had teachers ask, you know, well, my Google slide presentations might include examples from their textbook. You know, what do I do there? And just a reminder, you know, our license is that Common Core, uh, or sorry, not Common Core, I'm a math teacher, um, that Creative Commons non-commercial attribution license. So you wanna make sure that if you're putting stuff in here that you have the option to share that with others, just like you would be sharing this content in here. Um, so keep that in mind. So it looks like we have at least one question in our Q&A, so maybe we'll go there and stop for some questions at this time. Yeah, Katie, I think, um, you know, w again, we've jumped right in here. This is advanced flexbook editing, so we just immediately started with doing some edits, but um, one of our educators here has, you know, asked, do we have the option of choosing which book to edit for a particular course? So maybe, uh, maybe it'd be beneficial just to go back to our homepage and remind people where they might find um, the content that they're looking for to begin sure. these edits. Yeah. So, you know, as I showed you at the very beginning of this, I could search for content to work off of. Um, so that's what I did for that first kind of learn behavior of animals piece. Um, for this particular option, I just went to our homepage. This nice little orange and green CK12 logo will always get you back to the homepage. Um, and I can browse content through here. So in this case, as a demo teacher, I've pulled a bunch of different areas of content, but I can actually show all subjects instead of just the ones that I worked off of. And you can go through any of these topics. So let's say I was teaching algebra. You could then go in and you could pick a topic so addition and subtraction phrases, and I could go in and I could pick the matching read that went with that, and I could customize that option. So if you wanted to do it at, oops, if you wanted to do it at the concept level, you can just go in and kind of browse through that. 
if you want to customize a whole book, you would just go to the Flexbook textbooks tab. And you could say, okay, I'm going to customize our middle school math concepts for grade eight. And that has a customize option. You'll see that customize option at this whole book level. And then if I go into a chapter, I have the option to add this to a textbook because that kind of lives within a book. But if I go down one more level to the read itself, the option to customize comes again. So you can edit at the whole book level for any book that you see that's published on CK12, or you can edit simply at the lesson level if you don't really want to work with a whole book at this point in time, but you're just trying to edit a particular read. Okay, so that was our only question at the moment. Um, I was actually going to show uh, a couple of just really short video clips right now. And so maybe um, during those video clips, you guys might come up with a few more questions you want to ask. But um, we go out into the classroom a lot and see how teachers and students are using CK12. And so I'm going to show you two short clips. The first clip is of a social studies teacher named Jonathan Wood, and he's from Tullahoma, Tennessee. And the second clip is of Jessica Favela Castillas, who is a chemistry teacher in El Paso. So let me take the screen back over here. And I'm going to show these to you. And then we will be back for more. My favorite thing about it is, is you can update, change um, content, um, adapt to what you need for that classroom. Um, if I have some content on there that that I think is, is not working, or the students don't like, or um, that I don't like. That it's just, it, for whatever reason, I, it's not working the way I thought it would. I can find other stuff and, and use other stuff to, to change those chapters and, and change the format of everything. I'll, I can also upload videos anytime I want to there, upload uh, any pictures that I need on there, any other resources, you know, as needed. So that, that's what I like the most, but I can kind of form it the way I'll, I'll, I want to. We were asked to reorganize um, the Flexbook that was already there and adapt it completely to EPISD and our curriculum, our scope and sequence. We added things that were student friendly, we added videos and I think that was a really good experience because as a, as a chemistry teacher, I knew what my kids were, were needing as far as, as a textbook, as far as content went. And I could rely on the textbook to have videos and interactives and any kind of visual that I thought they needed um, that they couldn't get in a standard textbook. Okay, so again, just a couple of educators talking about, you know, talking about the power of, of customizing this content. Of course, we've made it easy for you where you guys can just get on our site and use a book as is. Or we have teachers who just make, you know, a few basic edits like Katie was showing at the beginning, um, rearranging chapters, deleting chapters. But um, we're hoping that you'll leave this webinar today with just kind of, you know, feeling empowered that you can really make your book look however you want to make it. And you can dig into your archives of, you know, videos that you like to show your classes, or if you're a teacher who's created some of your own videos for like a flipped classroom, or as Katie just showed you, Google Slides, all of these things can be incorporated into a CK12 Flexbook. And again, we've got this easy platform, you know, that makes it accessible for students. So um, before we go on to the next section, Katie, are you seeing any questions? I'm not. So as we said, please keep those coming. Um, hopefully I'm explaining it cleanly. Oh, it looks like we just got one. So um, that one was a thank you for answering the question on editing. Um, feel free to continue to add those in. Um, we're happy to, we'll, we have two more kind of core demonstrations as we work our way through and we'll definitely stop in between those to answer more questions. So toss them in. Um, so I think with that, we're moving into the math editor. So I just want you to see kind of this math editor as a whole out of context, just to focus on it for a second. Um, you can see up here that we have an option at the top that has drop down options. So in this case, we're looking at the different uh, kind of Greek letters that you might want within there. Um, if you want to use the math editor, our math editor works kind of in one direction. So you can use the drop down menu and it will populate this field right here that you see with the kind of function left parentheses, X, right parentheses, um, it will put that in itself. 
If you know LaTeX coding, you are welcome to type directly in there, but the minute you start typing in code, then you're gonna wanna continue typing in code because you'll lose kind of the feature at the top. So I will show that to you in a minute, um, but I definitely want you to know that if you don't know coding, you can still nicely format all of your equations as we work our way through. Um, so we had one question just in terms of, is this video being recorded? Um, it is being recorded. All of our videos are available live later. Um, so you can definitely check those out as we go through. So don't worry if you jumped in late, um, just kind of check out what we have, ask your questions and we'll continue to go from there. Um, but I'm gonna share my screen and go directly into the math editor so you can see what that looks like. So this is a particular section on the Hardy-Weinberg uh, model. There are a couple of different options for this within CK12. This is kind of your standard one. There's another one that has a lot of the actual probability of kind of what's the probability that you'll have the same particular um, component show up within a genetic population. Um, sorry, with the genes within a population. Um, so if I was gonna customize this, and I can save that piece, you can put your name in there, you can put kind of whatever you want to retitle this part. Um, but let's say I wanted to go down here and I actually wanted to type in here. So we can simply choose a couple of options. So if I just needed a special character for mathematics, um, let's say I just wanted kind of the pi symbol or something like that. This special character menu works just like it would, um, you know, that you would expect within a regular Word file or a Google Doc or something like that. So definitely check this out if you need any particular symbol as you're working your way through. Um, I could even, you know, put the equal sign in here, approximately equal to my square root options. So that special character menu is just this little special character option right here. So hopefully that will be useful if you don't need fully formatted equations. But if you wanna go into the math editor itself, that's that little X within curly braces, and that will pop open that screen that I was just showing you within the presentation. And so at the very top, if I click within here, I now have the option to choose, let's say X to the Y, and you can see right here, D to the power of cubed. And I can even preview this and you'll see that it's a, you know, your D variable cubed there. Um, if I wanted something else up here, I could change that out. I could continue to work my way in here and let's actually start putting in some of these models. So let's say I want my function equal, so plus equal to um, something squared. So let's say P, but I want it squared and that had an X squared. So if I was gonna change that here, I could actually go back in and say, let's pick my option as I'm working my way through. So I can say P squared. And in this case, instead of X, so if I wanted to change something in here, so this gives you, you're saying your function, but it's actually the probability of getting the dominant particular trait as you're working your way through is P squared. So I could then add that into here. So you're simply going up and adding that component. If there's already a math equation and you simply wanna change it, you could just double click on it and it will open that piece up. And then and I could actually say, okay, well, what about the probability of getting the recessive tree? And I could change those variables and get those components within there. So you can work within the actual code. As you notice, if you already have code in there, you might not get that pop-up option. So you could just start from scratch and say, I'm gonna add a brand new math equation and that will give you the option to work with all of our drop-down menus. If you have any trouble using the math editor, then definitely click on this little pop-up that gives you a link directly to our help desk, and that will help you understand kind of all the components for using that math editor as you're working your way through. That's both within the math editor here, as well as you could navigate to help up at the top at any point in time, or by clicking on this, are you stuck here? So just keep that in mind kind of as you're adding math equations in, you can do it by simply changing something small within an existing equation, using coding if you know it already, or going in and adding a brand new equation if you're unfamiliar with that particular code as you work your way through. So 
hopefully that gives you an idea of your math editor as we're going in. Well, while you're up on that editing bar, um, maybe we should just keep going. And why don't you show them some of the other menu options that are up there? Sure. So um, let's say I wanted to, instead of putting this kind of equation in the middle of nowhere, I wanted to actually highlight this particular model. Um, so one of my favorite pieces that I love as a former math teacher, I know every book I ever taught out of had these nice little like blue box, call out boxes that had formulas and key information. So we have this little insert element box. So I can put that in here. I can type in a header. And then I can put in anything I want in here. So you'll see we don't have the option to insert media because it's kind of within that extra special formatting, but I can still insert equations. So I could add that brand new equation. If I knew how to type it in myself, I could say f of the dominant trait, g squared. Katie, actually, while, while you're in there, one of our questions that just popped up was how do you write a chemical formula when using the editor? Do you have any tips while you're, while you're in there about chemical formulas? Um, so if you're using formulas kind of within any particular piece, let's say, you know, your H2O um, as you're working through, you can type in, just like I'm typing here, whatever formula you wanted to use. Um, so it's not, while it says math editor, you're welcome to use it for anything else. Um, if you needed a subscript in here, so let me just finish this piece as I, I we had a half of it already, you can see this part, but if I needed a subscript, um, for H2O, for example, I could type that in and that would have H2O and you can kind of see that previewed here. Once again, um, if I add this piece in and I need brand new content and I don't know how to do that formatting, just start fresh and you can say, okay, I need this piece right here. Click outside of that little really piece and type in my O, and now you'll get that piece there. So you're welcome to use this, not just for mathematics, but for physics formulas or chemical equations or whatever that looks like. Um, feel free to put that in here. You'll see different options kind of in general. I would just explore this. You have kind of your different pieces here with different braces or absolute value, your integrals, um, different components here, various Greek symbols. Kind of whatever you need as you're working your way through, you can definitely include within here. Um, so definitely check those out and hopefully that answers your question. If you have a particular formula you want me to test out, feel free to you know, send that to us and I can show you what that might look like. Um, but otherwise, feel free to use this for both math and science or other subject areas for any special formatting that this would be useful for. Um, so I'm gonna close that out because I don't really want H2O mixed in with my Hardy Weinberg model, um, but that would give you the option for an element box. Um, if I was gonna continue within here, and I wanted to, let's say, add in an idea, kind of before the summary, I wanted students to explore one of our interactives. Um, this Flix Interactive. Let's talk about how we might get there. I'm gonna just open a new tab, and I can go into, kind of from our homepage, I can explore Plix. I could say, okay, I'm working within life science, and I could just kind of scroll down, or I could use our search feature, but I could pull out different options. And let's say I wanted this one on blending inheritance. If I open that particular Plix, so right now at this point in time, you're, you're gonna see some of these kind of embedded with their own piece, but for you, what you would wanna do is you just wanna copy the URL at the top. So I'm gonna hit Control C. And then I could simply highlight those words, choose our little insert edit link, paste it in there, and click insert. And so then students, when they clicked on that, once we saved this, it would pop them to that interactive. You could do the same thing with any of our simulations as well if you wanted to incorporate those within our particular piece. Um, so different options in terms of what we have. All of our content within CK12 has a URL that you could link within this particular piece. For our interactives or our videos, you can always embed those components as well. Um, now let's say I wanted to talk about kind of looking at even maybe creating something like this where we have traits crossed, 
we have actual outcomes or maybe the parent genes versus the offspring. If I wanted to create a table within CK12, I could simply go up to the table, insert the particular table, Uh, in which case they're going to get that dominant trait, et cetera. So we could work our way through here and kind of add to that table. If you wanted to change anything on the table, you'd simply click within there and right click from here. And you can see that you can insert rows or columns as you're working your way through. You can click on table properties, which I find super helpful. Um, a border would kind of add those edging around there. Um, I could add a summary or a table caption to here. And if I, the table caption is actually your header. So traits and offspring. And you could add that component within there. So you can explore the different components of the tables simply by inserting a table and then right clicking and kind of accessing all of these other options in terms of adding components or pieces as you work your way through. Um, so that's a couple of our pieces. Another kind of special part, let's say in my summary, I wanted to add some vocabulary. So vocabulary. Now I could put this under the summary header, but just a quick refresher kind of from the basics. If I highlight this, I have some options for formatting. Our standard text is in paragraph format. If I wanted this to go be kind of a slightly under summary, but still pulled out, I could choose the section two option. So generally your section one would be your big new headers. Your section two would be a subheader and then section three kind of underneath that piece. Um, so those are options as you work your way through. But if I wanted to add vocab, I could insert a definition list. So here we have term definition. Let's say allele is my first term, and then I could write the definition. So variant of a gene. And I could navigate back and forth by decreasing or increasing my indent, just kind of like your bulleted list and tabbing back and forth. I could put in another piece, the hardy Weinberg model. And then I go down and I tab forward again, and I could write the definition there, and so on and so forth. Or I could just hit enter, and then I could insert another set of lists, and it would start over again. And I could put in the next part, migration, kind of whatever those vocabulary components are that you might have been seeing within this piece, and then the definition there. Um, so feel free to use these decrease and increase indent both within a bulleted list or regular text or even within a definition component. Um, so that takes care of some of your basic components. Um, sorry, some of your more advanced components. The tables, our math editor, special characters. We talked about images and multimedia. This isn't showing up because I'm within that definition list. So just make sure I click outside of that. And now once again, it shows up again. If I wanted to separate this from the questions at the bottom, I could even add a horizontal line. Um, and your standard undo, redo options show up as you work your way through. And sometimes if this screen is actually just a little small to work with, I can even expand the editor to full screen. So that might be helpful. And then I can kind of see what's happening as we work our way through here um, or go back here and shrink it down again. So I'm within the larger component. Um, so that's kind of your special character components. This is your quotation if you wanted to put a block quote in. Um, and I think all your rest, we covered your basic formatting, highlighting, text color, those pieces. So I want to talk just a little bit about some of the other components that will help add clarity to your particular text. Um, and those come under the resources and details tab. So here, this is, we always get the question, well, I have this great worksheet that I want to share with my students. Um, do I need to type it into CK12 or can I just add it as an extra resource? The resources tab is where you can upload files that go with this. Just a reminder, you're uploading them and sharing them like you are with the rest of the content. So make sure that they fit within that license, but you can definitely upload those files. That resources tab is also at the table of contents level for a lot of our CK12 books where you will find answer keys for those resources. So definitely check out that resources tab either to see what resources we might be providing or to add your own as you're working your way through. The last tab here is your details tab. 
Now, this particular read was customized from CK12, so it already includes some information in here. We have a basic description. We have our learning objectives noted here. We have some vocabulary that we maybe wanted to include. And then it has all of the attributions from the original authors of this particular book. So you can see the main authors, contributors, and editors for this book. If you were gonna add significant content to this, you'd wanna kind of add your, it should kind of add your name as you work your way through, or if other people contributed, you'd wanna add their names here as well. And you can simply do that by clicking on the add attributions piece, and then choosing what role they played within that particular edit. Um, so definitely, Keep in mind that your attributions happen both within the images that you're uploading as well as for the read as a whole if you're adding new content. You can add subjects, you can change the level if you're updating kind of the level of the read itself or the grades that you think it's designed for. You can add tags for searching and then this key one is choosing a concept node. So this links it to that concept page. So if I went back, I'm just going to open another tab for a second, um, go back to CK12. And if we go into this particular piece, Hardy Weinberg, and I was opening content within life science, that's your biology one. So I'm gonna pick kind of your concepts within bio or community contributed. This is the read itself here. So however I'm linking that particular piece, this link to this concept area is what's that last component. So this tells me that I'm actually going into this particular concept. And as you can see, it's a biology concept. Um, at this point, it's the read itself is linked at that lower level of middle school life science. Um, so you can add other concept nodes if you want to tag it to somewhere else. Or if you're starting something from scratch, that's where you could pick a concept to attach it to so that it would then link accordingly with kind of those other resources for that particular piece. I want to look at that this just at the whole book level as well. So let's say we opened up that middle school life science book that we had been looking at a couple times earlier today. And if I browsed into life science, I picked my book that I wanted to work with. And then I clicked customize on this left side. So I'm going to customize this book. I'm going to say demo for December. Well, I can save any pieces here, but these same resources and details components, so see here are all the answer keys, they're added to that piece. The details is for the book as a whole, same concept. If you're looking for them at the chapter level, that's where this nice little edit option happens. So I'm gonna just click edit on the chapter level, and here I still have my resources and my details for the chapter as a whole in addition to having the option to add it, any introduction to the chapter or summary for the chapter or your basic information, kind of what the chapter title is and the description. Um, these show up digitally at the beginning and end of the table of contents. And in your PDF, if you were downloading a book that you were working off of, they would show up at the beginning and end of that chapter. Um, but you can find all of these different places to attribute content or to add special features or to add clarity and explanations, both for yourself as you're kind of working your way through and understanding what you're adding and um, including within that piece for your students as they're working their way through and saying, okay, well, what's this chapter about? How does this work? What vocab do I need for this piece? as well as for anyone else if you're sharing it and they choose to customize it further. That gives them all the information and they'll cleanly be able to attribute if you've done your job when you added new information in there. Um, so hopefully. Okay. That's a lot to digest. So as you guys are thinking about this, um, continue to post any questions you have in the Q&A. Uh, you will notice that Katie's just been saving as drafts um, finalizing as drafts. I think the next thing we're going to talk about is, is this idea of publishing and why you would want to publish and how you would go about publishing. Um, so Katie, if you've caught your breath, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you ready go ahead. Right? Okay, let me share my screen and we'll, we'll talk about publishing and then we're getting close to wrap up time. So still hoping to get any additional questions you guys might have. Throw them in the Q&A. And here is our publishing information. 
Great. So as you can see here, there's a couple of different pieces. Um, that save versus finalize option allows you to save as draft anything that you're working on. And then when you finalize it, it pushes it to production. But that next step is to actually publish it. So the first thing is if you can see on that left side, all the way down right above quick tips is that option to publish. So you would click that, you'd publish your book and it's published. You don't have to think about it again. You don't have to republish. It just, it exists. It's out there. It's published. It's good to go. You can continue to edit and update it and finalize and push new changes, um, but you're good to go. It's not something that you have to republish all the time. Um, and so then the question becomes, why would I publish? So by publishing, you can access the, your content via search. So um, you can easily access your book, which is simply by searching it. Your students can search for it. They can find it that way. Other users can find it. Um, and plus, you're then adding to the resources. So CK12 has created a ton of STEM content primarily. Um, you'll see within the schools page, other users that have added content or even just through search um, for subjects like social studies, some great teacher resources for English language arts, um, and kind of these other areas that CK12 didn't start out as being our core content. Um, but by publishing it, they've then added to the community and you're welcome to do the same. We encourage you to kind of enhance the resources available. And then the last step beyond publishing is to actually add a schools page. Um, and maybe at the end of this wrap up, we'll go back in and we'll show you where that is again. I know we did it in our Flexbooks 101. Um, but that way, especially if a number of teachers in the same school are all creating customized books, then students have one link to the schools page and they can find all of their resources for all of their classes in one particular place. Um, so I think with that, we're going to have maybe Lindsay go over some just general logistics and then we will stay on and answer. It looks like we're getting some great questions that um, come, are coming in. So continue to add them and we will answer them as we go. Um, okay, so. well then let me go ahead and continue here and Katie, I'll start reviewing those questions. Um, yeah, I want to show you just some of the, the pages on CK12 that kind of help bring it all together. So if you go to ck12.org tools and apps, um, this is an option in your footer as well. You'll see the apps that we have available. Um, we do have an offline reader for our Flexbook. We have a physics simulations app and we have a practice app. So these are all things that you guys might consider downloading. Definitely have your students download for, for easy access. Um, I like this page too. This is ck12.org slash overview. Um, this is the overview of our resources. Um, on this page, you'll see a rundown. Um, today we talked about Flexbooks and we kind of briefly mentioned concept-based learning. Katie showed you a Flex. We talked about a few other things, but if you've just started using CK12 or even some of our users who've been just using Flexbooks for a long time, you may not know all we have to offer. So this is a good page to start. Um, those plus, those red plus signs are expandable. It will give you some additional information about that resource. And then we've got, you know, a minute and a half, two minute video um, next to all these resources with teachers and students talking about um, how this is impacting the way they teach and the way students learn. Um, we also have a download, um, downloadable PDF flyer there in case you're wanting to share information with um, colleagues, with, with your district, um, that's available on this page. Um, a great thing for you guys to do as well, if you're interested in, con in continuing this conversation, is we have what we call the CK12 Cafe. And we have cafes for students, but one that we have for educators is this Jumpstart for Educators Cafe. So if you, from the homepage, go to Cafe, you'll have the option to join the Jumpstart for Educators. And then we also have some state-specific educator forms. And this is a place really for you guys to network. Um, we, we jump on occasionally and answer some questions, but um, it's a great place for users to talk about their experiences and, and hear from other people doing the same thing that, that, that you're, you're currently working on. Um, we have, this was the only scheduled webinar um, for the end of this year. I think we're about to take kind of the holiday winter break. Um, we will be back January 11th with everything CK12. And this is our all-encompassing rapid fire 
um, where we go through flexbooks and our interactives, our flicks and our simulations, our adaptive practice, our groups. Um, we really run you through all that CK12 has to offer. So you might consider joining us then if you want an overview of everything or refer to colleagues. Um, CK12.org slash webinars is the place where you can register. Um, I also want to mention that we do have a certified educator program. Um, right now it's just a summer program. We ran it um, in the summer of 2017 and it was a four week program that talked about um, uh, a lot of the things like what we were talking about today. Um, we're going to be starting up a certified educator program again for the summer of 2018. Um, pretty soon you'll receive some emails about how you can start getting registered for information for that. Um, but actually this session that you guys attended today, um, this is a session that you could get credit for in our summer 2018 program, if that makes any sense. If you're somebody who you think, hey, I'm going to get certified this summer, um, send us an email. Send us an email to jumpstart at ck12.org. Um, we can chat that out in the, in the chat menu if somebody will. Jumpstart at ck12.org. Tell us you're interested in certification, and we will send you an assignment that goes with this webinar. And then we'll have a record that you attended this, you, you did the assignments, and we'll know that going into summer 2018. Um, if, if none of what I said just made sense or you're like, I'm not interested in getting certified, ignore it all. But if you have questions about certification and how you can apply this session, jumpstart at ck12.org is what you should email. Um, then we have a, uh, a feedback form that we use all year. Um, it, it just, it's a few questions that really helps us to know what we did well in this webinar and what we could do better next time. So if you have a minute, we have a tinyurl.com slash ck12webinar17. Um, just give us, give us a few feedback of, of ways that we can continue to improve. We really appreciate it. Um, we'll put that in the follow-up email as well. So um, thank you for joining us. Like Katie said, in, in the next you know, 24 or 48 hours, you should receive a follow-up email and we will get a copy of this webinar posted to YouTube. So you can always view that on our archive page. And um, if you need to rewatch it or if you wanna, if you wanna send it to a colleague. Um, you can also check us out on our social media or support at CK12 is a great place to um, email if you ever have any technical questions or general support. So with that, um, I think we have a bunch of questions, so I would suggest that you guys, you guys continue to stay on for questions. If you do need to leave, thanks for joining us. Um, we'll hopefully see you later on. But uh, Katie, why don't you take back over here and get through some questions? Okay, thanks, Lindsay. Um, so I'm gonna start with a couple of the questions that just came in about links and recordings and all of this. So um, hopefully you guys can see my screen. Let me try that. There we go. Um, it looks like it came through now. So if I scroll to the bottom of this, most of the links that Lindsay just referenced are here in our footer. Um, and the exception would be kind of the link for this particular webinar, and we'll send out the follow-up email with that tomorrow. But our recordings, if I click on this webinars tab, our recordings always show up um, on our webinars page. And you can see at the bottom here the recordings from our webinars for this year so far and even beyond that. Um, so definitely check that out in the footer. Um, Ryan was kind enough to put all those links in the chat window right now. So if you want to just open the chat window and copy those links, you can copy them as well. But in general, you'll see them down at the footer there. So that's unnecessary. Um, and then I want to go through just a little bit about kind of that publishing part that we had been talking about. And as these um, questions continue to come in, I will continue to answer them as we go. Um, but I can find my own library here, um, and it looks like I need to go back to here for a sec, so let's try that one more time. If I click on my library, you can see the different components that I was working on right now. If I click on that book as a whole, or even on a particular section, you can see this publish option right here. Um, so that would be your publish. It then asks whether or not it's CK12 derived, so in this case, this was a CK12 book that I customized. I customized it from other content or it's brand new content, and then I can publish that book. Um, so once there, I then have options. I'm gonna go back to our homepage for a second. As a teacher, you'll see those schools and all of these resources here for schools are books that um, users have published. 
And in this case, you can kind of go in and add in. And if you want to request um, a school, you can just email support and send us the information and we'll get our schools page up and running. Um, so that is kind of just that last component in terms of publishing in the schools page. Um, and we have some different questions in here. So as Lindsay said, feel free to stay on and listen to all the answers for these. If not, you're welcome to log off and go from there. Um, so we have a question that asks if you can incorporate CK12 in a blended learning page. So our URLs for CK12 are unique. So if I wanted to share something within any resource that wasn't already integrated, then I could easily copy that and share that within an external component. Um, if I went down to here, that tools and apps page that Lindsay referenced earlier. So here's our CK12 tools and apps. This gives more information on different learning management systems, Google Classroom, um, Edmodo, Schoology, Canvas. So if you're working with learning management system, we're actually integrated in um, more in-depth ways in that regard, but in any particular option, um, we definitely have teachers that use CK12 in blended learning environments where they're using a component of different resources and options and um, feel free to share all of those as you work your way through. If there's a particular piece that you're looking for, um, for the person that asked that question, feel free to expand on that and I can go from there. The next question that we got has to do with answer keys. Um, so, in this particular case, they said they've changed the order of some sections, but the answer keys are matched for the original resources. So you would need to note that accordingly. Um, if you have a particular question, so I know like the life science resources, for example, that we were just looking at, let me open that book. Um, so let's say you reorder these. These resources do have them as that particular chapter. Um, you might simply wanna just open that and resave it as a different component. Um, at least the title wise there. If you're having issues with the actual text within that PDF, then feel free to contact us and we can talk to our science team about options for you to get a modified version of that. Um, so just let us know. Um, the next question has to do with um, NGSS aligned resources. So if I go back to this homepage, um, we actually at this point in time have aligned our content accordingly. So if I click on this standards, you can find Common Core Math or Next Generation Science options here. And if I click on that, it will take you to the content that is most closely aligned with any particular resource. So let's say um, physical sciences. Here's your first physical science NGSS standard. And these are the different concepts within CK12 that actually relate to that. And that would then take you to the page and it'll have a variety of resources that go with that. Um, so we're aligned in that component. You can also search, if I go back to the homepage um, and I look at standards here, I could search for NGSS aligned books. You can pick a topic um, and a grade level and then it would show me and say, and here it tells you which NGSS standards um, relate to content within that particular piece. We are working, you might have seen the Common Core for Math link at the bottom, we are working on more enhanced versions of our content, but at this point in time, you'll see at least a correlation for the topics and the components for NGSS and Common Core. Um, so, there's that piece. And then the last question that we have open here is, is there a webinar to show how teachers can collaborate on a book itself? Um, so there, we did one this past summer um, that talked about kind of adopting CK12 curriculum that included a component about collaborating with teachers. Um, but the basic idea in terms of teachers collaborating, there's a couple of best practices that we talk about. Um, so if I open this book in my library, let's say for example, we generally say that whatever core account is gonna host that book should be the one that you'd wanna store that material in um, because every time I try to access something from someone else's account, I would have to customize it again and then you're gonna have multiple copies across the board. Um, so definitely kind of host them in the main account and only have one person editing them at any given point in time. Um, so I could go in and I could edit this I would then save it and I'd sign out and someone else could go in and they could edit it as well at this point in time. There's not collaborative editing where more than one person can work on the same book at the same time in CK12 at this point. Um, 
if that feature comes out in the future, we would talk about that more. Um, but that's kind of your, your best practice is one person edits at a time. And that goes, that's true for both multiple colleagues and myself. I don't want to have this book open in multiple tabs. I just want to have it open and editing in one place, save it, explore CK12, add anything to it externally, go back in and edit. Clean options, one tab, one book, um, and that will save you a lot of headaches as you're working your way through. Um, the other thing, if you're looking for kind of how to build a team or something like that, um, I might check out our certified educator program from this summer. Um, this past summer's resources are still alive here, and you can explore those as you work your way through. Um, this adopting CK12 curriculum was kind of this general piece. We have links to the brochure, our CK12, um, and that will open, and we actually just put it kind of in a Flexbook page ourselves. So what's your goal? How might you structure your team? And those are some great things to reference as you're working your way through. Um, so definitely check out that resource um, if you're talking about kind of building and adopting CK12 at, at a group level um, or at a district level because um, that will help you kind of think through some of that process. Um, and then if you ever have any questions on, hey, we're trying to do this, uh, feel free to email support at ck12.org. I know just yesterday I emailed a teacher that did our program this summer that was getting into kind of the weeds and editing content with their colleagues and had a couple different questions and we just shot them answers back pretty quickly. So feel free to contact us. Okay, so we'll give it just another few seconds, see if any other questions come in. Okay, if you guys think of any, you can email support at ck12.org. Um, this is it for the end of this year for webinars, but we hope to see you guys back on more webinars in 2018. Thank you for joining us today. We're going to sign off. Goodbye.